right? For years, the United States has been the world leader in free market economic principles. However, our corporate tax rate is the highest in the world, and we use a flawed, outdated system of taxation. Therefore, my partner and I stand firmly resolved that the United States federal government should substantially reform its re revenue generation policies. Let's take a few minutes to examine exactly what our corporate tax system is doing to damage the U.S. economy. We'll see this through our harm. Domestic investment discouraged. Domestic investment discouraged. U.S. companies often have income stored in other countries. If they want to bring these profits here, referred to as repatriation, they pay taxes. This policy is known as foreign income deferral. Taxes on overseas earnings are deferred until the company brings it here. The result is that U.S. companies have an economic incentive to keep their profits outside of the United States economy. The Wall Street Journal reported in September of 2011 that, quote, this system discourages companies from bringing earnings back to the U.S. U.S. multinationals have more than a trillion dollars in profits parked overseas, unquote. Precisely, U.S. companies are holding $1.4 trillion of unused profits overseas. These profits could be here in our economy creating jobs, but are not because of the disincentive that our tax code creates. This harm results in one significant impact, job loss, job loss. Because of the way our corporate tax system is structured, U.S. companies pay much lower taxes overseas than here. As a result, they have an economic incentive to invest in internationally instead of domestically. Seth Heinlein, a JD and Director of Fiscal Reform at the Center for American Progress, said in March 2011, quote, deferral provides tax incentives for overseas investments. In fact, it encourages U.S. companies to make jobs offshore, even if similar investments in the U.S., absent tax considerations, would be more profitable, unquote. What this quote means is that because of the structure of our tax code, U.S. companies see more profitable investments overseas than domestically. The inverse of this is that if we fix the structure of our tax code, domestic investments will become more profitable than overseas investments. Therefore, we as the affirm team propose the following plan to be passed by Congress upon an affirmative ballot. Mandate one, cut tax rates. Cut tax rates. The tax rate for companies making over $50,000 a year will be dropped to 25%. For companies making under $50,000 a year, the rate will drop to 10%. Right now, there are eight corporate tax rates. Our plan consolidates them into two a 10% rate for the smallest businesses, and a 25% rate for the rest. Mandate two, worldwide system. Worldwide system. The United States will move toward a worldwide system of corporate taxation. Under this system, U.S. companies will pay taxes on all of their profits, at home and abroad. Repatriation will not be taxed. On top of this, companies will receive a deduction for the tax rate already paid to the other country in question. For example, if a company did business in Ireland, they would pay 12% rate to Ireland and a 13% rate to our government, adding up to our rate of 25%. All current overseas profits will be exempt from taxation. So just a quick summary, we decrease all the U.S. corporate tax rates and we begin taxing all of a corporation's profits. If needed in the round, we can give more explanation of our plan. <coughs> this proposal will result in two important advantages for the United States economy. Advantage one, economic growth. Economic growth. Once we make repatriation tax-free, companies will bring their profits back. Working to invest now in America, which is a political effort to enact tax-free repatriation, said in their admission statement, quote, it is essential to allow American businesses the freedom to bring global earnings home to invest now in our still fragile economy. Recent studies show repatriation will help create several million new jobs and generate revenue for the Treasury, unquote. This effort is supported by 44 different large U.S. companies that would repatriate and use their profits should our plan come about. Just a few big names are Apple, Google, and Microsoft. And the full is here if the negative team or the judge wishes to view it. To illustrate this economic growth, we turn to the following impacts. Firstly, about the effects of repatriation, and secondly, about the effects of decreasing the tax rate. Impact one, domestic investment. Domestic investment. Douglas Holtzikin, a PhD in economics and the former director of the Congressional Budget Office, said in August 2011, quote, repatriation would speed the pace of economic recovery, increasing GDP by roughly $360 billion and creating approximately 2.9 million new jobs, unquote. GDP refers to gross domestic product, which measures our economic growth. Once this $1.4 trillion is repatriated, our GDP and jobs will grow substantially. Impact two, foreign direct investment. Foreign direct investment. Foreign direct investment, also known as FDI, refers to overseas companies investing directly into the United States. <coughs> Reducing the corporate tax rate increases this kind of investment. Royal Wolverson, an economics writer for the Council on Foreign Relations, said in February 2011, 
quote, a 2008 Econo Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development study found that foreign direct investment increases by 3.7% for every one percentage point reduction in the corporate tax rate, unquote. We reduced the rate by 10 percentage points, meaning that we increase FDI by roughly 40%. This will create thousands of jobs. Reducing the rate also increases our international competitiveness by bringing our rate in line with our major competitors. So our plan increases the investment of domestic corporations, but also the investment of foreign corporations into the United States, creating jobs and GDP growth. Advantage two, reduce deficit. Reduce deficit. Our plan reduces the U.S. federal budget deficit through two ways, which we'll see in the subpoints. Subpoint A, economic growth. Economic growth. Chris Edwards, director of tax policy at the Cato Institute, said in April 2011, quote, cutting corporate taxes would create jobs and increase productivity. Dropping the federal corporate rate to 25% would be self-financing as reported profits increased over time, unquote. Cutting the corporate tax rate will not result in any loss of revenue to the federal government. The economic growth in our plan will in fact increase government revenue through getting the economy on the move, reducing the deficit. Subpoint B, reduce tax evasion. Reduce tax evasion. In the current system, U.S. companies can cheat the system by hiding their profits in tax havens to avoid taxes. This is a technique referred to as transfer pricing, income shifting, and profit shifting. Senator Carl Levin said in July 2011, quote, economics professor Kimberly Clausing estimated that in 2008 alone, the income shifting of multinational firms reduced revenue by about $90 billion. Over 10 years, that translates into nearly a trillion dollars, unquote. Profit shifting is economically unsound which is why our plan prevents it from happening by taxing all U.S. profits, here and overseas. This will substantially increase revenue. Additionally, when we reduce the deficit, we increase the confidence that both households and businesses have in the stability of our economy and our fiscal outlook. This will predictably lead to increased consumer spending and increased business investment, which will grow our economy even more. Today's tax code punishes domestic investment, killing both present and future American jobs. The proposal we have outlined today will create 3 million jobs, $360 billion of economic growth, a 40% increase in foreign direct investment, and a substantial reduction in the deficit. We have to vote affirmative to give America back on the road to recovery. Thank you. Back for any questions by the native speaker. Good afternoon, Grayson. How are you? I'm doing great, Manoa. How are you? Pretty good. A couple of questions. I'd like to start off, uh, basically, I'd like to start off with your plan. You talked, you had two mandates. Your mandate one was to cut the tax rates, and mandate two is a worldwide system. My first question is on your mandate one. Is anywhere in your plan mandate abolition of the repatriation tax? The mandate two in our plan ab uh, abolishes the repatriation tax. Uh, I caught a worldwide system. Does that abolish the repatriation tax? Yeah, and then we also specify that in the mandate explanation. So you get rid of the repatriation tax with your plan? Yes. All right. Uh, let's talk about your mandate too really quick. Now you talk about this worldwide system. Mm -hmm. Now do you have any evidence that the United States federal government has the jurisdiction to tax companies on profits made overseas? Well, if it's a U.S.-based corporation, then the United States has jurisdiction over their filing tax. Given a if a U.S. citizen files taxes in the United States, the government can tax them on income overseas. That's just how our tax code works. All right, now where do we draw the bright line between someone being a U.S. company and a foreign company? I mean, like how much of their company has to be invested in the United States in order for them to be considered a domestic company? Well, if they file taxes in the United States, then they're a domestic company, and that's how the system works. So you basically, so let's say even if they're creating jobs in some other country and their, their product is in another country, if they file taxes in the U.S., they pay U.S. taxes. Yes. All right. Uh, let's talk about your advantages. Your first advantage was that of economic growth, and you had kind of two impacts. Your first was of domestic investment. Mm -hmm. So basically your argument here is the lower the corporate tax, uh, the more investment comes to the United States. Well, actually, that one, that impact was specific to the repatriation effects. The second impact about foreign direct investment was about decreasing the corporate tax rate. So the government being able to tax corporations is causing companies to go overseas, basically. The way that we tax corporations is causing companies to do investments overseas instead of domestically. If they're a headquartered company in the U.S., taxes give them incentives to go overseas instead of domestically. All right. Uh, now, your second impact talking about FDI and federal direct investment. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the specific number there for how much we increase? 3.7% for one percentage point decrease. All right, or sounds 10 good. 10 percentage point decrease, so that's about 40%. All right, so how much FDI did the affirmative plan generate? 37% specifically, so 37%. roughly 40%. Yeah. All right, and what is the economic benefit of FDI? Uh, FDI is increasing investment into the United States, and increasing investment particularly leads to more jobs, more business growth, more products, et cetera, et cetera. All right. 
Uh, your second advantage talked about reducing the deficit, and you talked about economic growth, and this is going to reduce tax evasion. Now, my first question here is, is your argument here that tax reductions can result in increased revenue? Yes, they can. Can you give me some warrants for why that's true? Well, when you grow the economy, this was my cell phone I'm referring to here. Mm -hmm. When you grow the economy, and more people have jobs, more people are paying taxes to the federal government, given they now have income. And then our cell phone B was also about reducing the tax evasion. All right, so it's not, they're not going to be getting money from the corporate tax, but they get more money from other taxes. That's yes. an analysis? Yes. All right, you talk about reducing tax evasion. Now, does anyone in your plan evolve? Abolish the corporate tax loopholes. We abolished the loophole of foreign income deferral, which is the major loophole. All right, but there's still companies. hundreds of thousands of corporate loopholes that are still well, in place. Well, not hundreds of thousands, thousands, but there are about 300 in the whole tax code. 300 exemptions in the whole tax code. There's around 100 of the corporate tax code, I believe. So and there's still at least 100 uh, loopholes remaining post your plan, so you wouldn't be able to solve for tax evasion? We're not. Oh, our, my tag of the argument wasn't eliminated. It was reduced. We reduced tax evasion oh. by eliminating one of the major ones. All right, the so major one. Can I have a copy of your one you see? Yeah, there you go. Fabulous. Thank you very much for your time. All right.